undertaken today form part of the series of standards AS1289 methods of testing soils for engineering purposes. What will be shown is simply an outline of the procedures because to conduct them according to the standard requires an ARTA accredited laboratory, which we don't have. The particle size distribution of soils can be determined by what we call mechanical analysis or sieving analysis. The procedure involves sieving a representative sample of soil through a series of sieves with the largest sieve placed on the top progressively down to the smallest one on the bottom. At the base of the stack of sieves we normally have a pan that collects all the fines that pass through all the sieves. Sieves vary in diameter from very large ones in the field to smaller ones used for laboratory purposes. Here we have two different stacks of sieves, a larger incomplete set and the smaller one that we'll be using today. The larger set has the uh, aperture size in millimetres and the, the aperture size can be seen etched on the uh, stainless steel strip. Unfortunately, the sieves that we'll be using for our mechanical analysis are British standard sieves and British standard sieves, instead of having the aperture in millimetres, has the aperture as a number. So we have uh, BS7, BS10, BS20, 30, progressively down to BS120. We can equate the BS sieve number to millimetres by an appropriate table, which we'll see uh, in a little while. But uh, unfortunately, also, uh, the stack of sieves that we have here are not uh, complete in the sense that the uh, smaller sieve is a 120 sieve, and a 120 sieve is larger than the number 200 sieve that's required to separate the coarse from the fines. The number 200 sieve is in fact very close to 75 micron or 0 0.075 millimetres which is the required aperture or hole size to separate the fine from the core sample. So with the number 120 sieve we will in fact have some fine sands passing through into the bottom pan so it won't be correctly or completely separating out the fine from the coarse grain soils. A visual examination of the sample was first conducted and with this visual examination, we have the opportunity to get a preliminary description of uh, the soil and uh, make a, a preliminary assessment of the likely soil type. An empty container is first placed on the electronic scale and the reading zeroed. The sample may then be poured into this empty container and the sample then weighed. and we have, in this case, exactly 1,200 grams. The sieves are now brushed clean and, if need be, separated by carefully prying them loose. And once they're brushed clean, they're stacked once again in order. make sure that we are once again keeping the largest one on the top and the smallest one on the bottom. If I reverse the order as I stack them now they will then come to the correct order when I flip them over. When cleaning the sieves it's important that we don't perforate or damage the fine grid, especially with the finer sieves. Uh, we are allowed to do something like this to uh, facilitate that separation of the cleaning, but the brushing should be done very carefully. If there are particles that don't come off, they'll just add to the weight of the sieve, because they'll be there as part of the sieve strip. The bottommost sieve, the 120 sieve, can be seen here, and as you can see, the aperture is very, very fine. The uh, size approximately is that of fine gauze. Once we've cleaned the sieves, we then stack them back again in order and find their mass before the soil is added. The first sieve being the number 7 sieve, 377. The second sieve is then placed on the pan.
351, the number 120 Civ 281, and the bottom pan 298. We once again assemble the sieves in order with the largest one on the top and the finest one on the bottom and place it onto the shaker to commence our sieving analysis. Now once we've placed the sieves on the shaker, we pour the sample into the topmost sieve, taking care not to lose too many of the fines. We can use the lid to help us keep the fines in place and place the lid on and push on the sieves, push on the sieves so that they are nice and firmly nested. We clamp these sieves down and tighten the wing nuts to ensure that the set of sieves is clamped tight to minimise losses and sieve for a minimum of 15 minutes. So Now that we've sieved them, we have uh, the different fractions caught by each sieve, and this gives us an opportunity to examine each fraction a little bit uh, more closely. When we do the soil description, we do not do the description of each of these fractions. We incorporate into one description, but by having uh, a closer look at each fraction, it gives us a better uh, idea of especially the coarse grains, their shape and size and in fact their colour. So we now start measuring the uh, mass of the soil retained by each sieve, including the mass of the sieve itself. If the sieving has not been done for a long enough time, we'll see that some of the particles fall through, so if no particles are falling through, it means that sieving has been sufficient. Otherwise, it means that we should have sifted for a longer time. The bottom pan contains the particles that have passed through the 120 sieve, so the material that we've caught in here is finer than uh, number 120 and will include both fine grain materials and some fine sands. Uh, the mass of the soil retained by each of these sieves should be added and compared to the original 1,200 grams to see uh, what fraction we've uh, in fact lost through the gaps in the sieves due to the sieving process. From these values we can draw the particle size distribution curve by drawing a, a curve that represents the fraction or percentage of particles passing through each successive sieve. And with the particle size distribution curve we can assess the soil and uh, give it a USC classification and a more detailed soil description. Here we can see a, a graphical representation of a typical set of sieves with the pan at the bottom, the number 200 sieve bottommost or what equates to 75 micron sieve bottommost and uh, progressively getting larger and you can see from the British uh, standard sieves that the sieve numbers get larger as the aperture gets smaller. In other words, a 200 sieve is actually a smaller aperture than a number 25 or number 18 or number 10 sieve. So the numbers get larger, the, the aperture size gets smaller. Here we can see a table to convert British standard sieve numbers to aperture size. Number 4 equating to 4.76 millimeter, number 60 to 0.25, and the number 200.074 millimetre, which is very close to 0.075 millimetre. The smallest sieve size in our mechanical analysis was the number 120 sieve, the number 120 sieve being slightly smaller than the number 100, and if the number 100 is 0.147, the number 120 approximates to 0.12 millimetres, which is still uh, larger than the number 200 sieve. Once we plot the particle size 
distribution curve, we can assess the likely soil type by looking at the shape of the curves. And as can be seen here, we have a curve that has a gradually falling slope and that is indicative of a well graded soil. A curve that is approximately vertical indicates a poorly graded uniform soil and one that has plateaus or steps, a poorly graded soil that's gap graded having a deficiency of some uh, soil uh, sizes. Here we can see a typical particle size distribution curve with the data points shown and the smooth curve drawn between the data points. On the top we have the US or British standard SID numbers and the equivalent size in millimetres. Once this curve is drawn we can also determine the D60 and D10 value, the diameter or size that 60% pass and 10% pass and from the D60 and D10 we can uh, compute or calculate the coefficient of uniformity that can also be used to uh, assist in our assessment of the uh, soil type or the soil classification. The mass of the sieves that we found in the laboratory have been added to this table so we have the mass of the 7, 10, 20 down to the 120 sieve as well as the mass of the, the pan. These masses will subtract from the total mass uh, retained uh, to find the mass of the soil on its own. Having subtracted the mass of the sieve from the total mass retained, we're able to work out the mass of the soil on its own and add it to this table. So 72 in the number 7 sieve, 72 retained by the number 10 sieve, 240 grams the next one, 180 in the number 30 sieve, 84 the number 40, 156 in the number 50 sieve, 132, 144, 60, and 60 caught in the bottom pan. If we were to add all of these values, uh, and we are able then to check whether the mass that we have retained matches the, ma the mass that we had to start with, and by adding all of these values, we find the total is 1,200 grams, which means that the loss is a negligible. If we were to now subtract the mass retained by each sieve from the total mass and do a cumulative subtraction, we'll be able to evaluate or calculate how much passes each particular sieve. So in the first entry, 1,200 take 72, 1,128, that's the number of grams that pass a 7 sieve. If 1,128 grams pass the number 7 sieve and 72 grams was caught or retained by the, at the second sieve, the number of grams that then pass the number 10 sieve is 1128 take 72, which equals... <laughs> which equals 1056. We continue subtracting that number from the previous number in a cumulative manner, each time calculating the mass of soil that passes each or each respective sieve size and knowing that at the end the final entry needs to be zero because nothing gets through the bottom pan. If it's not zero then we've made a calculation or computational error. The summation percentage can be evaluated by dividing the mass passing by the total mass. So if we divide 1128 by 1200 and multiply it by 100, we get the percentage passing the 7 sieve. Likewise, 1056 divided by 1200 times 100% would be the percentage uh, of the total sample passing the number 10 sieve and so forth and so forth. Uh, we only need to work to two significant figures because the level of accuracy of our graph doesn't warrant any more than that. And from here we can determine our data points to enter into the chart from which we can then draw the particle size distribution curve.